Hello there, my name's Joe and welcome to my channel. Today, I thought we'd take a look at the Aegis Flow utility nodes. And um, what I thought we'd do is take a look at the author's uh, GitHub page. We'll go through the installation process and then I'm gonna demo some of the, um, the nodes from the utility nodes um, on my workflow that you can see here. So um, without further ado, let's cue the whoosh. So here we are at the uh, GitHub documentation for the um, Aegis Flow utility nodes. And these are authored by Aegis72. Now, they're a nice set of um, overview notes, easy to understand. Um, got a few diagrams in there as well. They start off with the um, parsers and placeholders, which I won't be looking at today. But if you use the um, or are interested in using the use everywhere nodes, and these are the nodes that allow you to um, create connections to other nodes without the um, spaghetti connections that they are. I've did a YouTube on them recently, and I'm sure other people have too. Um, worth looking at. But if, so if you're into use everywhere, um, these parser nodes that come with um, this suite um, could be could be very interesting to you. However, I'm not looking at that today, so I'm going to move on. Now, what we do have um, on offer is the Ali's nodes um, here, which is a set of um, nodes that we can use to make adjustments to images, and we'll definitely be taking a look at those in, in a moment. We also um, have an auto grouping of nodes placed as templates. I should be demoing that. Again, very useful. And um, finally, we're going to look at the auto contrast node text contrast. And we're going to look at this first, actually, because this is, is a really nice touch. So I'll put a link to the um, to this page by ages 72, as I've said, I'll put the link in my comments, but of course you can also link to it anytime by um, from within the um, Comfy UI manager. And I'll quickly just remind you how to do that when we get around to that bit. Okay, so let's move on. So to install the um, Aegis Flow utility nodes, um, quickest way we can do that, go across as usual to manager and select install custom nodes. Once that's opened up, just go across to the search box. And all I did was type in Aegis Flow. Press return. And we can see here it's taking us straight to the Aegis Flow utility nodes. Um, so if you want this set of nodes, then just install this and then do a restart of Comfy UI. And um, then we'll continue. Okay, so I think we'll start with the um, auto contrast node text contrast. And so basically what you get with this add-on, once you've installed Aegis Flow utility nodes, um, hopefully you can see straight away that um, just looking at my workflow here, you can see the titles on all of the nodes are instantly much easier to read. So there's nothing for you to do. That just comes once you install um, this set of nodes and to be honest um, even if you didn't want anything else in this in this set of um, um, nodes available with this this group this alone is uh, a very useful add-on and certainly spent a lot of my time looking at other people's workflows and not being able to read um, the, the text on them so this is really helpful so nothing to do once you've installed um, Aegis Flow utility nodes, you'll have this. So that's the first bit. Next, I want to take a look at auto grouping of nodes placed as templates. So with this, um, if you haven't seen templates in Comfy UI um, before, you can save um, a node or nodes as a template and then just call it forward whenever you want. It's, it's a very quick, easy way of um, calling up your, your favorite nodes. However, um, what the author in this set of uh, nodes has, has done is you can now call, call forward your templates and they will already have a group box added to them. So let me just demo what, I'm, what I mean. I haven't got a lot of space 
here on this workflow. So just bear with me. I'm just going to try and make a very, very basic demo. So I'm going to, um, let's just do a load checkpoint. I've got my little checkpoint here. I'm going to do a copy and paste. We'll do two of them. We've got two checkpoints here. And I want to add these two checkpoints as a template. So what you need to do, first of all, is select both the nodes. So we've got both nodes selected here. And then what you need to do is come away from your nodes and find an empty space on your workflow. And then right click. And then you select Save Selected as Template. Click on that and you'll be asked for a name. So I'm just going to say test two. Click OK. So I've now got as a template, if I wanted to call up these two checkpoints, I can do that at any time. So let's just get rid of these now. And now if I want to call up my template for my two checkpoints there, again, I would right click. And I would come down to node templates. And there you can see my templates. I don't have many, but you can see here is my test two. So I'm going to select that. And now you see as I pull that up, I've got my two checkpoints, but it's automatically been added to a group box, which makes it easier to move around. It's quite a nice little touch, this. And you can, of course, um, it gives it an automatic name, but you can change that and you can change colors as well if you want or whatever. But that is quite a nice, useful tool as well. So moving on now to the um, alley nodes, which is which is really for me anyway, the, the, the best bit of this. Um, a nice set of nodes. I think there's about nine of them in all, um, which I've got uh, here. Here I'm showing just a random five of them where we can make adjustments to, to an image. And, um, but before we do that, let me just go through my workflow just so uh, it makes some sense. So I broke my workflow up into three groups. This first group here, this is just the standard text to image workflow. So um, if you were to click on load default, this is what you would get, maybe not the same colors, but this is what you would get with the exception of my, my little notes here. So this is nice and easy. So if you do want to copy this and have a go at doing this, the first part is just a load default text to image, nothing else to do. I've uh, minimized that because I'm not using, uh, sorry, that's the uh, negative prompt. I'm not using that. So I've just minimized that out of the way. Everything else is um, just default. I'm using for this demo, I'm using the Dream Shaper XL um, checkpoint. We've got a little um, prompt to generate a text, a recon, a, I nearly said reconnaissance, a <laughs> Renaissance Leonardo da Vinci style image. And uh, we'll look at that in a moment. Um, come across to my case sampler. I'm just using a Fixed seed. Again, as always, I'll use my one, two, three, four, five fixed seed. Eight steps. CFG2. I'm using the DPM plus plus 2M SDE sampler and the carries scheduler. Denoise is set to one. And that's about it. So, yep. So, Dream Shaper XL checkpoint, as we've said, and the empty latent image size is 1024 by 768. So this bit should be nice and easy. I'll bypass the second bit for a moment and just quickly come down to the, the third um, group, which again is very simple. I've just literally added five preview image um, nodes to hook up. And if again, if you're not particularly au fait with finding your way around Comfy UI yet, I just double click on my uh, left mouse button. I'll type in image and then you're going to get some options there. And I've got my preview image and that's all I did. So, and I 
got it to the size I wanted it, and then I just copied and pasted it. So I've got five copies of that. So there we go. That's that bit. So that bit's nice and easy too. Taking a look now at the middle section, which is the Li or Le nodes. Um, to access those, um, if you right click on your mouse and select Add Nodes, you'll see here at the top here, I have Ages Flow. I left click on that and come down and we see here FX. If I select that, we now have, I think, I think there's nine here. There's nine nodes that we can choose from. So I just um, have opened up a selection of five of those nodes, which we're going to um, demo now. So that's all I did. So one by one, I added a variety of those nodes to my um, workflow, pretty much just to see what they would do. So um, let's, let's move on from that. So let's just get rid of this now. So we've got these nodes and the, the routing from these nodes is, is really quite simple. So from your D, uh, sorry, from your VAE decode, um, from the image, um, make a connection down to the input on your, whichever node that you've, you're adding it to. So here I would add the input from image down to images here, and then from the image output here, I would make a connection to the image input here on the preview image. And then I would just keep repeating that for each of them. So, if, so if again, for the next one, bring down connection from image into Q rotation, and then from image output into the image on the second preview. Um, and like that for all five of my um, demos. So that's it. Um, we should now be ready to um, generate an image. Oh, I have, by the way, I've just, I have, um, I use this all the time. I have a play sound node, which just plays a, a ding dong for me when my image is ready, but um, that's neither here nor there. So we've got our five random nodes. We're going to get a preview image. Um, depending on what settings are on these nodes. And we'll, we'll look at the settings of those once we've, we've generated the image. Um, I have up here a save image, whereas these are all preview image. And I'm hoping because we're on a fixed seed now, um, I won't be making any other changes to this image. Therefore, um, no matter how many times we may play around and generate um, a fresh image, if we make any changes in these nodes that we're going to play with in a second, I won't be generating a new image up here because nothing has changed up here. So once I've generated this once, I will have one image, one image, one image alone. So I'm not wasting disk space. All my tests and trials are happening down here. And these are just previews. So these are not um, saving anywhere unless I want to save them and then I can do a a save image. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Let me just um, generate an image now to show you what I mean. So we click on Q prompt. This will take um, a little while on my machine because I'm using AMD GPU. So I will um, come back once we're a bit closer to the finish. Okay, so we have our um, image here, which has been saved to disk. And we've got these five variations of, of this image, which are just saved as preview. And what, what you can do now, see so heart's content. So without generating additional images, um, if you are on a fixed seed, if, you, if I was on random now, Every time I wanted to, if I wanted to test and adjust any of these down here, I would be generating a, a fresh image. And I don't really want to do that. I, I like this image here, so I'm going to stick with that. So I'm st staying on the fixed seed. However, come down to here. So this first um, Ali node 
that I loaded was the swap color mode Vextra. And if we click in here, we see we've got a, a whole host of different color modes that we could choose from. So I use the luminance, um, which gave me this really quite nice black and white image. Let me just open that. There you go. That's quite nice. I'm quite, quite pleased with that. Um, but you can, yeah, as I say, so you can select any of these, test it, see what it does, see if you like it. And then all you need to do is once you've made your selection, if you generate a fresh image, nothing's going to change up here because we haven't changed anything on that fixed seed. So it'll, it'll run through these again, but until you make any changes to any of the other nodes here, they're not going to change either, but you can, you can run through and see what you get on your swap color modes. So that's a little drop down change. Move on to the next one, which is hue rotation. Let me just open this up very quickly. So you see this, this here, because I've changed the hue on this, it's got a much deeper blue um, tone to it. Again, so it's still quite nice, but all you want, all you need to do to experiment on it is try different ranges here. So to get this tone, um, I added um, 2.0, uh, 20, yeah, 20, and um, just regenerated the image again. Moving on, we've got the flatten. These, most of these nodes, if, you, if you're into photography, these, these nodes will be more familiar to you. So um, anyway, so we have here a flatten, flatten collars Vextra. Quite a hard word for me to say. And again, in here, just to get some variation, um, just try different different numbers and see what you get. See if you can find something that you like. So, moving on, coming over here. Oops, let's change that. Um, you can quite clearly see what this does. It flips the image, and it's and it's done that. But nice little nice little quick way of doing that. Very very handy. And lastly, a brightness contrast um, node, which is again for photographers really nice to be able to darken or lighten your image. And again, you just select the number, play with it until you get it how you want it. And that's really it. So nice and easy to do. Very standard workflow, added in a few preview images. And then really I just test and tried some of these nodes, um, these early nodes, but they are very nice. And I think uh, particularly people, photographers, um, we'll be more familiar with these and but find these very useful. So that's pretty much it, I think. So um, yeah, so I hope you found found this useful. I think the um, the Aegis Flow Utility nodes are a, a nice set of nodes and well worth having. And this this thing with the text here is absolutely lovely. The the grouping your um, any nodes that you put into templates is is very helpful too. And this set of nine nodes here are, are just excellent. So on, on that note, I'll just uh, thank you for your time and, uh, and say goodbye.